Hi there, I'm Ellie Baker. I help teachers and tutors swap their 60 hour per week teaching job for a two hour per week tuition business. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that looming deadline. So if you're a UK teacher, the 31st of May is probably looming for you if you're considering moving away from your teaching job and starting a tuition business. Um, if you are already a tutor, then you're probably chock-a-block uh, with your tuition at this time of year and you're thinking, how on earth can I slim this down and have more time for me and why have I swapped a 60 hour per week teaching job for this? Because you're probably um, working all the hours anyway. So I've got something for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about what keeps us stuck in our current circumstances. So the real reason why we tend to stick with the job or the current set of circumstances rather than take the leap. So let's talk about the, the forthcoming deadline. And if you're watching this at any other time of year, teachers, if you're in the UK, you know that there are those certain points in the year. There are only three of them when we've got that door there that we could run through. and We've got to make that decision. And it's a tough call. It really is. So the 31st of May is probably the main one and that's coming up. It's a date that practically every UK teacher has burned into their psyche. It's that last chance saloon after which if a teacher does not hand in their notice, they're essentially deciding, and I'm using the word decide a lot in this video, to stay in the role for at least another six months. That's a biggie, isn't it? There aren't many other professions out there that demand that you stay for six months and that you've only got one other chance that year to make your escape. So you might be in this boat right now, decide to stay, decide to go. Uh, decide to go without a plan, it's too risky, right, surely? Or so people will, be, will probably be telling you. The truth is that everybody has the ability to quit a set of circumstances, a career, a relationship, whatever that is, that's making them miserable, even if they think they don't. So I'm, I'm, I'm a classic example of this. So I quit my teaching career 10 years ago, almost exactly, to the, to the month. And I started a business with no help, no money, had no savings, and I had a baby in tow. And there was no promise of a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I didn't have any special formula or special skills. I was just a languages teacher with a baby who did not want to sacrifice my motherhood and my child's uh, precious years um, as a baby and a toddler. And I didn't want to miss out on those precious milestones, like, you know, her taking her first steps and all of those things, her first words. I didn't want somebody else to be reporting that back to me. So to me, the risk was missing out on that. And to me, that felt like a greater risk than quitting my job with absolutely zero plan. So yeah, many people told me I was taking a big risk, but the truth is 10 years later, um, and it didn't take 10 years to get there, by the way, you know, it, 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 it was pretty quick going from not knowing what I was going to be doing to replacing my teacher salary. But here I am doing a little review 10 years later and I'm in my best place financially. But more importantly, I'm so much happier and healthier than I ever was as a school teacher. Um, I feel better today at 42 than I did at 32 and probably even at 22, if I'm totally honest. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why that is and some of the tough decisions I had to make to get there. So, you know, what is my secret? There isn't one. I decided to quit the circumstances that were impeding my happiness and taking away all my time and not allowing me to have the health, have the time with my daughter um, and all the other things. And that was it. No biggie, no specific plan. I just decided to quit and decide is my key word of this video. So no biggie, you know, I, I didn't wait around for the right time because there isn't one. Let me tell you, the right time is the minute you realise <laughs> that if you don't go now, you never will. Um, I didn't wait around for the right time. I didn't wait to have another baby so I could get paid maternity again or whatever other crap excuse I could come up with. So yeah, I might be sounding a bit harsh here, but let's really call out our excuses and what is stopping us from doing the thing we really, really want to do. Was it complicated? Not at all. I listened to my gut, I trusted myself. Those are the only two things you need when making big decisions. Was it a hard decision though? Yes, yes it was because yeah, it's a bloody hard decision to go against the grain and quit in a world where peer pressure, systemic conditioning, promoted this self-sacrificial pathway, mindlessly progressing through TLRs as though it was the holy freaking grail. Of course, it was tough. Um, it would have been the obvious choice 
to just follow that trajectory, right, that everyone else was on around me, taking the actual thinking out of it and letting the decision be made for me instead of listening to my gut. It would have been easier in that moment to have avoided making any decision at all, stay in my job, blame the system, complain about it for the rest of my life. Of course, it would have been easier in any given moment, it's easier just to stay than to take that big call and make that jump. Easier in the short term, but soul crushing in the longer term. Life is full of hard decisions. It's full, we, we know this, right? Like the hard decision I took to leave my family, my friends, my boyfriend in the UK for my year abroad back when I was 20 years old. I had no friends, I had no money. Um, I could barely speak Spanish. Uh, my French was okay. I was not the best uh, linguist at that time. Uh, having to learn to function and navigate stuff like opening a bank account, working in a job, an actual job. Um, I went to lectures that were delivered solely in the Spanish in a really intimidating environment in a university that was probably way over my head. Um, renting a flat in another culture, paying bills, all of this stuff at the tender age of 20 and in a language, you know, in the case of Spanish, I'd only started learning two years beforehand. The easy route would have been to stay in my comfort zone and just duck out of that one altogether. And there were people who did. I could have done that too. But the easy path, the ducking out, would have really eroded my happiness and sense of direction in life, um, my motivation and probably my lust for life in the longer term. Um, so like the hard decision uh, to change my diet. Um, after watching many friends and family members suffer chronic health issues and having had some myself in my 30s and 40s, I made the hard decision to change what food and drink I put into my body. That requires daily discipline, something which, if you ask any of my friends, does not come naturally to me. The easy path would be to succumb to my moods, to my stresses, uh, my bad days, lack of sleep, and believe me, that happens a lot. I've got three young kids, two of which don't sleep very well, and let them dictate what I put in my mouth, sabotaging my health in the longer term. Like the hard decision to make exercise a priority. Um, part of me quitting teaching was so that I could decide on my own timetable and, and make things like health and fitness a priority, um, rather than making the easy decision to skip the gym if I don't feel like it. And believe me, most days I do have that internal um, monologue that says, Ellie, you really don't want to go to the gym. Come on, come on. Why don't you just stay at home, put the telly on, whatever. It would be easy to do that, but I'll make the hard decision every time. Every day we have to make gazillions of micro decisions and lots, sometimes a handful of big ones as well um, that take a bit more courage or maybe they just take a bit of commitment, like not putting that cake in your mouth when you're on a diet, like, um, you know, not skipping the gym when you've got this plan to get yourself bikini ready for a holiday or whatever it may be. Ultimately, I don't wear bikinis, by the way, I'm past that. Ultimately, what I've learned though in my last 10 years as a business owner is that the hardest decisions are the ones that we still haven't made the ones that are hanging over us, that we've been thinking about them for months, for years sometimes. I work with clients who've been, who've said the first time they decided they knew they needed to quit teaching was five years ago, 10 years ago, and they have still not made that decision. Um, these ones we perhaps let sit around and just consume our mind, consume our energy. They drag us down because we just don't get on with it and make the decision. Maybe we tell ourselves it's too risky, it's too big, or other people around us are dictating whether or not we make that decision. You know the ones that mean, the ones that feel like a massive weight on our shoulders, this nagging feeling, we really got to do something about this, but it just feels too hard. Like, you know, leaving that job, like, move, like leaving that career, switching away perhaps from one-to-one -one tuition. If you're in that boat now, you're worried, oh my, how on earth am I going to maintain my income or increase my income I'm already at full capacity and it's, it's that fear of letting go of those clients that you know you don't really want to serve anymore and you'd rather move away and do something else it may seem really hard in the moment this decision but by embracing the tough choices we choose personal growth over stagnation and this will pave the way for a more prosperous life and abundance with greater choices uh, greater chances of long-term health and happiness 
ultimately we've got to take responsibility for our future ourselves and decide what we truly want to do with the short and precious life that we've been gifted because we're not here we're not here on this planet very long are we so when we've got that in mind that might make things a little bit easier choosing to end a toxic relationship with your job because our job our working life that's a, that's a relationship or a partner, or taking the leap to start a new business, or pivot away from one-to-one -one heavy tuition, um, or moving countries for a better climate. All these things are examples of hard decisions that feel really uncomfortable in the moment, but they pave the way for a better long-term um, happiness. It doesn't mean the path is going to be easy after making the decision. It will probably be hard for a while, but it ensures that you move forward instead of staying stuck in that rut and being really resentful um, and ultimately making yourself unwell because most sickness begins with stress. So risk is necessary. It's not something we should avoid if we want to learn, grow and make the most of our life. A bit of risk is healthy. Um, so my last message to you really here is don't let the easy decisions dictate your path. Um, living in limbo land, not actually making that tough call, is the antithesis of a happy and free life. Your ability to make that tough call, to choose for yourself what risks are worth taking and actually taking them, that's where the gold is. If you can teach or tutor, you've got a superpower that should not be underestimated. Teachers we underestimate ourselves all the time. Society underestimates us all the time. We're underpaid and undervalued. We know all of that. So let's step out of being the victim of that. If you're ready to do this, take the risk, step into your new future. No one else can do this for you. There's never a right time. Um, you know, believe in yourself. I work with teachers day in, day out, and I love working with them because they are superhuman. And You've just stopped believing that you are. <laughs> so whether or not people around you believe in you, believe in yourself. I believe in you um, and you have got this. So tell me what tough decision are you going to finally make this week, today, this month after listening to this um, video, watching this video? I would love to know. So if you're watching this in my blog, you can um, send me a message by clicking on a link below. If you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a comment and we will get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.